Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and walkthrough. In this game, we're gonna be looking at Glenmore Chronicles 2, uh, the sequel to Glenmore by Matthias Kramer. The game plays for two to four players and takes roughly about an hour to maybe an hour and a half to play. In the game Glenmore Chronicles 2, or Glenmore 2 Chronicles, how you want to say it, you're basically going to be selecting tiles from this market area and you're gonna be placing them down into a tableau. And that tableau is going to give you actions, and then the, that ac those actions will give you resources that allow you to move characters around or move boats around. And you're basically gonna be trying to gather as many landmarks, as many victory points, etc., etc., as possible at the end of every single round, which is gonna take place based on tiles. And there's four tiles in here, A, B, and C, and D. Uh, after all those are placed down, the round's gonna end. You're gonna score points based on getting things like whiskey barrels or things um, of other of other nature such as Englishmen and whatnot or characters and landmarks of course and the person who scores the most points after four rounds is gonna be the winner there's a couple little caveats and whatnot and the tile placement is pretty interesting we'll go ahead and take a look right now and I will show you all the components of the game Glenmore's 2 Chronicle so here we have Glenmore 2 Chronicles I got the name right this time and everything included and as you can see there's quite a bit in the game uh, this game is basically the sequel to Glenmore and in Glenmore you get uh, this board here and I think landmarks and then of course the characters and you're building a tableau with your starting pieces and some gold this game comes with quite a lot additional added to it there's this board over here that involves uh, these nobles here that will allow you to gain um, additional victory points and additional resources throughout the game for for a cost and then there's also the chronicles i have the chronicles and baggies over here some of them are the prototypes that they made and i added some extra stuff to it so if you see some prototypes they're even less than appealing that's probably because i had to make them because they just didn't ha come in the bags um but they came with the englishman and the boat race so you're literally going to be racing uh your boats around everybody's tableau which is really funny and then there's another character in the game that other players can play on this board here is you buy different items that will cost you money this is the extra little bit right here here included but in general the game is pretty simple you're gonna have an a b c and a d stack and you're going to add anything related to any of the chronicles to these stacks here and shuffle them up however it tells you to you have an additional couple things here that are different and uh, you're then going to have starter pieces here and what you're gonna do with these guys here is you're gonna flip them over and then you're going to place them on this little rondelle which is where you're gonna be buying certain things and then randomly you're gonna place players down these empty spaces just like this and always leave the last space behind the last player open, but otherwise fill them in with any of the pieces from the, the latest card stack, just like this. Oh, well, not this one. This one's going to stay open. I just said that, and I, I, mess, I almost messed it up. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the characters here. Uh, this player is going to be the, always the one that goes first. Anybody, whoever is last on the rondelle is going to go first, which means you could take more than one turn in a, at a time, because on your turn, you can go ahead and select anything you want on the rondelle. But the farther away you go, the less likely you're going to get another turn as quickly as you would probably want to. Selecting the most recent piece, or the closest piece, is going to give you the most likely to go, to go next after everybody else's turn. But if you went over here for instance everybody could go ahead and select these pieces here and they could take another turn because you wouldn't be last on the rondelle whenever you place uh, your character on one of these pieces you're always going to add another token to uh, the rondelle just behind the last piece on the rondelle uh, the last thing you need to know about setup for this little board here is there is a die and this is basically the computer player after everybody goes and if the die is last it will roll and roll and it's basically a three-sided die on a one or a two, it's a one. On a three or four, it's a two. And on a five or a six, it's a three. So in this case, it's a three. So it will go two spaces and it will remove the specific tile that it moves on to. It's a way to speed the game up, I guess. Um, additionally, in this, all you have to do is set aside this little piece here. And uh, this will denote this specific victory point here. And there's a couple other ones uh, as far as that goes. These are the player tokens over here. You're going to get your little characters or soldiers that move around your tableau. And you're also going to get these little pieces that will be on this track here that you'll be placing them to gain spaces here. Because once you buy a space or place on a space here, it's going to be locked forever. It's up to four players in the game, as you can see. There is five different types of resources and whiskey barrels. Uh, over here is the market and you can buy and sell based on the numbers here. You've got meat or cows, rock, sheep, wood, wheat, and then of course whiskey, my personal favorite. 
Every character or player is going to start with one of these castles here, one of their uh, little characters down below, um, as well as their, um, this little thing I made, but it's basically gonna be two of them here. So you get one of these, one of these, a character or a, a, a meeple and six gold. And that six gold you'll be able to utilize throughout the game. And of course, the rest of these things here are just simply the gold and the victory points that you'll gain throughout the rounds, as well as throughout each of the ending rounds phases, which you can claim bonus victory points and whatnot. And that's pretty much what you're going to get in the game Glenmore Chronicle, Glenmore 2 Chronicles. A bunch of little bonus uh, expand, expanded content, as well as this board here. Um, quite a lot, actually. All right, well, anyway, let's take you down below. I'll show you how to play a round or so to give you a feel of the game. And then um, I'll probably show you about the boat race and what, uh, just maybe like the boat race to give you an idea of the Chronicles. And then I'll tell you what I think about the game. So here we have Glenmore 2 Chronicles and a lot of what's included. I'm going to show you a basic idea of how to play the game and include the Chronicles explained a little bit. First, I'm playing with two players here. So we have the two players selected at random. The yellow player will be going first. The computer is going to be up here in the front and then we have blue going second. I added these Scotsman. He's in the back here and this is the England token here in the back as well. Uh, basically to get him, all you have to do is walk past him and you can claim the uh, token and then he will become a player piece that you can utilize on the board, costing more and more money as you use him. If you don't want to use him anymore, you can simply place him on a tile in front of him and discard that tile, leaving him there. And the next time somebody picks up a landmark card or a landmark tile that has this symbol on it, they can go ahead and take the Scotsman um, with one of, one less of these little spaces available due to the fact that you get your money, the rightmost money back after uh, utilizing them a certain amount of times, whatever one you don't want. Um, so that is how that works. The starting tiles are down and I put A's for the rest of them that are not starting tiles. And uh, we're going to basically be taking turns. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do on your turn is uh, make sure that you've got your uh, area over here set up your tableau. And there's gonna be a starting space and a castle space to start with. The, the starting space uh, is going to basically, the castle space is gonna have your boat here and these boat tokens when you're including the boat chronicle. And uh, you're going to basically get six currency and then you're gonna have all of these which you're gonna utilize throughout the game. This is for this board here and this is for your uh, player board here. Now, the one thing you need to know is in order to place down anything in your tableau, you have to have a character there and provided there's no rules that change it otherwise on the cards or tiles. And you're gonna be able to place adjacent to that player in any of these spots here. If the player is not there, it was over here, you would not be able to play over here, for instance. So uh, there's a grid of where you can select to place your tiles down. Anyway, let me show you how it works. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this character here. I can move it as far down the line as I want, and I will go ahead and select uh, Wrath Sisser. I'm gonna take this little, to this little tile here, and then I'm going to place it in my tableau somewhere, provided it makes it fits the rule requirements. I'll go ahead and place it right there since it's easy to be seen. And uh, then I'm going to activate it and anything it touches. Uh, and so because it is touching this and this, that will, or sorry, no, it, I think it's just up, down, left, and right. No, it, it actually, okay, it is, it is um, all the way around. So in this case, it would touch this and this. So first of all, it's gonna activate itself, which means it's going to give a little piece of brain there, and that is going to uh, go up to a total of three in that space there. Then this is a movement, and this is a movement, so he, I could, I want, if I wanted to, move this character two times, or any characters on my tableau up to a total of two. I only have one character right now, so I'll just leave him there, I suppose. Then I'm gonna take this tile here, and you're going to fill it in the uh, last spot in which the player had moved uh, out of, and the next player is then going to get to go. It's very, very simple. Uh, next player is blue. He's gonna go ahead and take the cows here. He's going to then place the cows. He's going to gather a cow. And then he's going to be able to move twice. And maybe he will, he'll move over there. And then after that, it is now the uh, computer player's turn. And the one thing I got wrong with the computer player is it's not one, it's, it is one, two, and three, but it's on a one, a two, or a three is a one, a four, and a five is a two, and then the six is the three. They'll have a custom die, I'm sure, to explain this, but I'll roll it. I roll the six, it will go three times. One, two, three. It will take this and remove it from the game. Goodbye, sheep. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure to fill in the tiles. Don't forget to do that after everybody's turn. Always one space left over here. 
uh, the next player is going to get to go, and that is going to be yellow. Well, let's say yellow wants this space here. We'll talk about this. This is different, interesting. This does not go on your tableau, but it does get added to your, uh, your, your player space. And this card here is basically going to allow you to place on this board here. You're going to be taking one of these tokens here, and you can place um, from the starting area on any of these four starting areas. There's little lines that illustrate where you can go to buy stuff or get stuff. In this case, you would get two coins and a character, or a meeple, and that, and that meeple would just go onto your board. Or you can get three coins, you can get a barrel, and you get some wheat, a wheat and a meeple. Or if you want it, you can go anywhere on this board. It's just going to cost you money. So for instance, if I wanted to get, oh, I don't know, let's go ahead and say I wanted um, this one over here. I could spend one currency, because this is free, and then this is going to cost one, so I'd have to pay one. And then I would get the, well, looks, I think it's a, it looks like a uh, wood and a uh, stone, and those would go to me. So that's how you can gather more. You can go farther down this track here, uh, but... If I place there, it's locked forever. This stays blocked and nobody else can go there. And this is going to count towards victory points at the end of the round. Uh, then after that, the turn is over. He's going to add another A tile right there. And the next player is going to get a chance to go. Now what's interesting here is there's two tiles left over here. So this player can go over here and take this. And then he can place it right here. And that's going to trigger, like, like as normal, one of these here. It'll trigger everything around it, which is this here. And then he'll get two more spaces. He'll just move those just like that. And he's still in in uh, the last place. He's, he's, he's in last, so he's still going to get to go first again. And he can go place there and take this. Wow, he's getting a lot of good stuff, right? Placing this right here if he wants. Uh, and then he's going to get a black. He's going to get a brown. And he'll get an additional movement. If he wants, he can move his character again like that. He's basically activating these rows right here. He won't activate these though. And remember, his placement is based on this character here, so he can place here, 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 uh, and uh, here. So he can place anywhere around that character. And he's still gonna go again. So bam, he's gonna take this one again. So this was a great turn for him. He got a ton of stuff. This will put, put this here. He'll take this, get this. It'll gain him two more coins. And he's gonna get an additional character just like that. Pretty, pretty solid right there, if you ask me. The computer will get to go again and roll. That's one. It'll go here and take this and remove it. And the game is just going to continue building on from that. There's a bunch of different types of tiles in the game, uh, specifically like this one here. This is Doomberg. It's going to give you a man, and it also, so you put a man on here, and then it'll also give you a movement, just like this one does. This guy here is what I talked about before. It's the Chronicle card. Uh, Chronicle character, the Scotsman, and you're going to get this token and be able to use him for a cost. This area over here, like on your turn, let's say you wanted a wheat, you could spend one coin when you put it there, and you'll gain one of these here. So you can uh, use the market to your advantage to uh, gain gain these things here. You can also sell them, but if there's no coins here, they're not valued at anything. So if you want to sell a wheat, you wouldn't get anything. But if, there, if somebody bought a wheat last turn, you could then sell a wheat and gain a coin. So that's how the market kind of works like that. There's these tokens, these guys here, that'll give you barrels or whiskey. Uh, and then there's stuff that costs. Like for instance, this one here, it's gonna have a cost of these three resources and it'll tell you what it gives you, including a landmark token. Landmarks look like this, and I think this is in the original game as well. It's called Dome Castle. There it is. It'll give you this card here, which you're going to keep in front of you for bonus points as well. And it will in in additionally give you some kind of action. And this one says, place one of your tokens on this board here. See, the symbols match. And so you'll be able to place yet another thing here. So if Yellow got this, he'd be very, very, very lucky. In addition, it's also a castle, and it will give you um, a... A movement as well so that's kind of how that works the boat race is somewhere in the stack here but i have an extra one right here to show you this is the start of the boat race when it gets put down so in this instance after that guy's turn these are all supposed to go down here and there's still only one left in this round if this gets placed the player who played it will uh, end the round and uh, trigger bonus points but uh, this thing here is going to enable the boat race. And this is the boat race here. There's only two players in here right now, uh, blue and yellow. So we're going to add these extra AIs. If there's three, well, we'd remove one of these. And if there's four players, we wouldn't have these. Boats will always exit on the left and always begin on the right. So for instance, this will go over here and it'll go here. And then it'll exit on the left. And then it'll come over here or over here. And uh, it'll, it'll exit. And then finally, when it gets back to his, his place, so it's going to basically go through all of these. When it gets back to his, his castle over here, the, the race will end, end for him and he'll get bonus points. 15 points for first, 7 for third, uh, 3 for the third, 
Or for, yeah, it's two, for, sorry, seven for second and three for third. And it also tells you you also get like a whiskey barrel and whatnot. So you can score points. And how you move the boat is simple. Instead of moving uh, movement with your, moving your man, you can actually go ahead and use the boat. And it just it's just going to move from left to right, uh, from, uh, yeah, right to left, basically, going through all of these things. Additionally, when you cross these spaces here, you're going to gain something like a resource of some type. This is a cow. And then one of these is going to be a sheep. So you'll pick them up as you go through. And every Everybody's boat's going to go through and you probably will cross other players as you play the game. If you don't finish the race, you're going to be in trouble. There's certain things that happen uh, if you're not able to accomplish things. Uh, so, you know, be aware of that. And uh, that's pretty much the idea of the game for the most part. You're going to be gathering landmarks. You're going to be gathering these portraits over here. You're going to be get, making your tableau larger and larger, but you don't want to make it too big because it's going to cost you at the end of the game if you make it too large. You're going to be gathering coins and whiskey, and you're also going to be uh, ending the round here. So if I got this here and move this here, let's go ahead and place this over here. That will trigger a meeple just to show you how the rest of it works. Then this will have a movement, a movement. Um, that's going to give us another black. Um, and, and then also wood too. Okay, so anyway, just so I can show you that this is what happens at the end around. This is no more A left, so we're going to go to B next. And to trigger what happens is you're going to add up the total of whiskey barrels. And if you have more, you're going to score one point for each. And then if you have more than... Uh, then the next player for the highest uh, it's gonna be, be based bonus points is based on how many more you have than the next player So I think it's like for five you get an extra uh, Three points or whatever it tells you in the rules uh, As well as these portraits as well as landmarks and there's some other things that will score you victory points as well And you'll progress like this through all five of all four of the rounds and uh, there's some just crazy things that get added to the end decks here Things that are going to score you additional victory points. Things that let you trade in resources. Others that will give you multiple resources, like a cow and a sheep. This one is a cow and a sheep will trade for seven points. This is three whiskey barrels. It goes on and on. There's quite a few different things that are added to the game as it, in, it, as it progresses throughout. Anyway, hopefully that explains enough for you to get an idea of how it works and how you're building. Uh, let's go up and talk about what I think about it and any other caveats I may have uh, regarding Glenmore and all of the Chronicles. Caveats, caveats, caveats. Quite a few. I want to give you everything I, I can about the game so you get an idea of all the extra stuff you're getting, as well as the basic idea of how to play. So you don't have to read the rules like super. You'll have an idea before you just jump in. Uh, this little end tile is going to be in the D deck somewhere in the middle. And when this is placed down at some point in the game, everybody is going to have to cross through it before the game ends, which means you'll have a chance to get anything that is below it. And once that happens, the round will trigger an end, and you're going to score points based on your whiskey barrels and your landmarks and your portraits and all that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing is, all of these little landmarks here are going to give you abilities. Some are some are better than others. It just depends on how far along the uh, game you get, uh, how, how much better they're going to get. Uh, some of them last forever. Some of them are instantaneous, like uh, this one here so it says a finish line, which means at the end of the game, if you have one to eight coins, you're going to score one to eight victory points for each uh, for each coin. So in case you have seven coins, you'll get seven victory points at the end of the game. Uh, this one will give you a barrel and a character or a man. Um, this will give you two resources of any type. Uh, this will give you um, the ability to place on this board for a singular coin, so on and so forth. There's also some additional Scots cards, if you have the Scotsman that you can put in there, that will allow you to take the Scotsman, uh, Scott, the Scott token or the England token from another player to utilize the Scotsman as an additional uh, action. Um, these little boat tokens here, you're going to get up to three of them when you're playing the game because you don't get to take your own. So just, just to let you know. And finally, uh, this board here. Uh, this board, I believe, is new. And uh, like I said before, you can pay and go anywhere you want on this board whenever you get the opportunity to take the board action, which is going to be from the portraits or from any cards that have this symbol. But they have bonus points that you can gain, like two points for each character, um, two points for each... Uh, what is it? Two po a point for each coin, two points for each landmark, two points for each river, so on and so forth. These end tiles over here are going to score you victory points, and these ones over here are more like the instant gratification ones, and they're also a lot cheaper. So early game and late game, and it's pretty well functioned as far as that goes. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, there's this little character here on the top here. This just gives you two portraits that don't do anything. So you, it gives you bonus portraits, which will increase your maximum amount of portraits, which will give you victory points every single round. That's pretty much it. Oh, so, so what do I think? Well, 
in, in Glenmore and Glenmore 2, you're basically trying to gather as many resources you can to be then be able to make a nice tableau, which is going to allow you to gain victory points in any way you want. There's a ton of way to gain victory points. You want to go portraits or landmarks, if you want to go ahead and place on your tableau and exchange resources for uh, victory points. I went the way of the wheat, turning it into uh, whiskey, thusly gaining me a bunch of victory points really early in the game, which was really great. And uh, as well as the boat race will give you victory points, most of the uh, chronicles in some way give you points or additional resources or whatnot that make you want to use them. I really, really enjoyed this game. I hadn't played Glenmore originally, um, but I got the chance to play just the basic idea of the game before I jumped into everything here, and that's a lot of fun. This presents a lot more, and it's, it's better. This is hands down way more enjoyable than just the basic uh, a game. I do like ta I like the table management. I like playing down the tiles and making new city builders or any kind of building game is really fun for me. This is super great. This is not utilized a huge amount. It's utilized just enough to where you're going to gather th certain things, but it also adds a new victory point condition. The landmarks are a nice little added touch. The boat race. That boat race is fun, and it also gives me a reason to utilize movement because sometimes I don't need to move my meeples, and if I've Got a bunch of movement tiles because that's all I've been given. They're not very useful. So it kind of presents a better way of being able to move my boats around on these pretty little rivers all the way through. And it does feel interesting because it feels like you're traveling around the entire world. And if you get to the end, you're going to win. Super fun. The Scotsman's okay. That's a, it's a fun one that you can place. Uh, it's a, it gives you additional movement and their turns based on spending currency and you have to weigh the options as to whether you want to use that or not and whether you want to pick it up and how you can utilize them to discard tokens it becomes kind of a pc in some ways it's cool uh, enjoyable as well uh, i really like this game this game is a fun game i think most people once they see this game they're also going to be uh, interested in picking this one up it has a lot of strategy involved there's hardly any luck other than whether how the tiles are placed down but even still where you choose to go on that track may minus you a turn or so or a tile or so but that's not not gonna be so so bad because at the end of the game if you have a huge tableau you're going to be shocked points so you want to be careful not to build too big but you also want to make sure you have enough to have a, a, a well-oiled machine going on uh, so going ahead of other players can be useful but it's also very costly because it lets somebody else get multiple tiles which will engage them to be able to get multiple victory points or other certain things based on how they place placement is key in this game uh, and what you choose is also important. There's a ton of tiles that work well together and a lot that don't work well together. And how you build them and manufacture them is going to benefit you or it's going to hurt you. There's also tiles that can be placed on top of other tiles. Why do you want to do that? Well, that basically refreshes the space, giving it new life, which is really great as well. It allows you to get all the pit points and all that other stuff that you had originally previously gotten and no longer can get. And additionally, there are also tiles that will give you victory points. That's all they do. When you place them down, they'll give you points, and when you place around them, they'll give you points. But it's how you utilize them, because by the time you get them is late game, and there's a ton of ways to get victory points at that point, and you have to really decide how well you made your, your base and whether or not it's worth it to you to get that, or go, go to your tried and true method, whether it be whiskey or whether it be wheat, or if you want to keep going, gathering those landmarks and portraits to keep ahead of every other player. There's a lot to talk about in this game. It's very simple at, at its core. Move your piece around the board, wait until you're the last piece on the board, go again, build your tableau. But there's a lot of intricacies. This game is probably not for the faint of heart as far as players who have never played a thicker game like this one. But for those of you that are deep in a strategy, a, um, I, I, I'd say Euro style as well as like, uh, it's got a lot of like old, old style plays from my older older games and whatnot but it brings a lot of freshness with this chronicles that has been added to the game i really like it i mean it all feels like one fleshed out singular game all the chronicles added together with this game uh, when we played it all together i'm like i don't feel like these are expansions or add-ons i feel like this is all part of the game the farthest one would probably be the scotsman but the boat race is like a must be, must add in my opinion and you can play with as many or as little as you want as far as the chronicles go and this board here is also an ad uh that i feel like is part of the game when, we, when we're playing the game which is great because you want to make sure that the expansions are put together to the point where it feels like you're playing one full game it's not just like okay let's bring out this and this is a completely separate thing we're doing over here as a mini game i want it all to be in this type of a game to be attached together and it does a really good job of that 
There's not much more I can say other than the artwork's great, and I really enjoy the mechanisms. Uh, Grant and I have both had a great time playing this game, uh, and then we played it with three players. Callie enjoyed this game as well, and I think we even played it four players, but I can't remember who it was. But overall, a solid consensus for Glenmore 2 Chronicles. I said the name right, hopefully. I definitely suggest you check it down below uh, in the description. It's currently on Kickstarter. Please, I think you will enjoy it so much that Seal of approval. Seal of approval. Yes, good game. Glenn Morris Chronicle really enjoyed it, and I think you will as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out more stuff like Glenn Morris Chronicles 2 currently on our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that little bell notification. It really does help. If not, go ahead and go to our site, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, and more. Those giveaways you can win are up right now. One of them being Wingspan. The rest of them have been uh, picked winners. So see if you can go ahead and won. I've also emailed you if you did. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I really think you guys are going to get a kick out of Glenmore Chronicles. This one's going to get a lot of buzz, in my opinion, because it is, it's fun. All right, all right. Pick it up. I look forward to Glenmore and some Chronicles with you next time.